PRS SE has probably got to be one of my favorite budget guitars ever made. Guys, what is going on? Ike Guitar here. I've got a new guitar to review for you guys today. This is the Zach Myers PRS SE from PRS Guitars, and this guitar is incredible. So to put a long story short, I'm doing a trading game. This is the next guitar down the line. I traded my Player Series Made in Mexico Fender Stratocaster HSS configuration link in the description, for this PRS SC. Now, I think in the end, I ended up getting a little more value on the trade. This guitar is incredible. It sounds great, a broad range of sounds, and the guitar just feels amazing. So let's go through some details, and we'll talk about what this guitar is and how much it costs. And I think that now is the best time to formally introduce my new iGuitar rating system. I'll be rating this guitar based on five features, look, feel, playability, tones, and price, to give you guys a more formalized approach to how I rate these guitars to help you all in your buying decisions. But let's talk about the look of this guitar and the features that it beholds. So first off, the Zach Myers SE Signature PRS guitar includes a body of mahogany with a maple cap on top. You'll also notice that the flame maple veneer is in the style of the Trampus Green. A Trampus Green is an interesting color that was formulated when Zach Myers actually went to the PRS factory to detail his guitar. There was a guy named Trampus showing off some new colors and he chose that green. He mentioned that it's kind of like a, a beach feel. You have the green on the front along with the back being a more warmer wood. You'll find that the neck is also mahogany with a rosewood fretboard. And not only that, but to cap off the looks on this guitar, you have the clear tone pots. Zach Meyer specifically asked for clear tone pots because he felt like tone pots that are a solid color take away from the glory of the finish on the body. You'll also notice the bird inlays. I believe these are made of plastic and not true abalone, although be aware that for a price point like this, you're not gonna find abalone on a guitar that's not worth $2,000. Usually on PRS SE guitars, there'll be the half moon inlay, or it's gonna be a traditional dot inlay, but the birds are a really nice touch to this instrument. Also be aware as the accoutrement of this guitar that we do have a F hole with a semi hollow look as well as a center block running through the middle. Some SE guitars in the semi hollow range that PRS has made in the past have had two F holes on both sides of the instrument but you'll find only one on this particular guitar. But now that I've given you a good idea into the look of this guitar I just want to go through a basic a few basic things that maybe I'm not a fan of or something that is questionable. So first off, what I do really like is the satin neck. Now, Zach Myers has previously stated on many of his videos that he sweats like a pig and so he likes to have an unfinished neck. This is gonna be a satin neck, so it is very smooth to the touch. The one thing I didn't like about the neck, specifically the headstock is these tuners look like they're made of very cheap plastic and I don't think that it's really helpful to have a guitar with cheap tuners. Although the guitar does stay in tune, I think you'll find that these guitar tuning pegs typically have a very cheap and shallow look to them. Definitely not um, on par with any of the other mainline Les Paul Studios, but you're gonna get what you get for a budget style guitar. I will say I don't mind Trampus Green. It has grown on me since I've gotten the instrument, but I'm not really a fan of the finish. I think the green just looks kind of off and it's yellowish and kind of gross. I kind of wish that 
They would have had a bit more definition on the veneer on this guitar. Um, I think every guitar will vary. This happens to be a 2014 PRS uh, Zach Myers SE, so it's going to be a little bit different than the ones you get nowadays, especially the more recent additions. But I don't mind. I think the wood actually really helps out. The back of the body definitely helps mellow out the look of this green, but I wouldn't say that I'm a huge fan of the Trampus. Now, the one thing I do really like is I really do like these pickup tone knobs. Um, these tone knobs being clear, I wasn't thinking that, you know, I would really enjoy this um, look, but I think that the clear knobs do indeed make way for more influence to be on the actual Trampus green finish of the guitar. I also don't mind that the pick plates are yellow. I usually do mind a yellow pick plate, but I think for this guitar kind of needs it to kind of go with the Trampus. Now, other things I do enjoy. I truly do enjoy this F-hole. This F-hole really is a nice touch to it, and also that maple center block. You might be able to hear that or not, but it's running through the middle of the guitar, and the rosewood fretboard does look really good. Now, even though the inlays aren't made of true abalone, I do think that the birds look great. You would get a bit more coloration from an abalone inlay, but for the price point of this guitar, um, you can't be asking for something like that. But I do think that for the record, that it does look very good the way it is, and this rosewood does look really exquisite. I think they did a good job picking out the rosewood fretboard, and then also like... I used to think that the fret ends weren't t like were not as good as I thought they were, but I think the frets are rolled a little bit better on the front half of the fretboard, but getting toward the back half, toward the higher frets and the cutaway, you can definitely tell that the frets are kind of kind of iffy. Once again, 2014, it's definitely been reissued a bunch of different times, and it might be different for your experiences, but for me, the back half of this fretboard, typically from 12th and on, is a little bit you know, less rolled. It's, it's a little bit more jagged. When I was cleaning it with my rag, typically got caught on those frets and allowed some fuzzies to get attached to the fret wire. So as far as looks go, although I like the look of the guitar, the Trampus isn't it doing it for me. So if I'm looking at the looks of the guitar as a objective rating, I'm gonna keep in, keep in mind that not everybody has my opinion on Trampus, and so because of that, I give the looks an eight out of 10. I'm knocking off points mainly because the tuners are not the best quality, and I would have preferred real abalone, but I'm not gonna be picky. Eight out of 10 is great for this guitar. It looks really good for what it is. Now let's talk about feel. This guitar feels incredible in the hands. I think that if you like thicker boys on your necks, you're gonna really enjoy this guitar. It definitely has the feel of a more traditional Les Paul style. Um, what I really do like is the satin finish. The satin feels smooth. My hand runs quick along the fretboard. And I love the cut of this contour. Usually when I have a Les Paul, it typically tends to like bottom out because the bottom's so heavy. This guitar is just light enough that the cutaway sits nicely on my leg and balances the guitar out well. Something to keep in mind for you guys is that there is a little bit of belly relief. You can kind of see that. And most Les Pauls don't have that kind of belly relief, but because PRS SE is smart like that, they put that relief here and it just feels really great. Now I will say, I did take it out on stage, and the stage, um, it sounds really, really great and feels great. The guitar is nice and light comparatively to another Les Paul model. And obviously, we're semi-hollow, so we will lose some weight off of that as well. But as far as feels goes, this guitar feels great. And I'm going to give this rating a 10 out of 10. Now let's talk about playability. Now I think this guitar is especially good for playability. There are some cool things, some cool features that really add to the mix. I think these tone knobs and the more traditional Les Paul um, sound pretty good, but on this guitar it's kind of mastered. I really like how the tones roll off on this instrument and the feedback from tone control is really good. What I mean by feedback is, you know, how well do the pots move underneath my fingers? How good does this transparent pot feel? These pots feel like they're a million dollar pots. I mean, these things sound great, they feel great. The logarithmic control of attenuation is really solid and I really like how this guitar feels and plays, especially because, of course, like I said before, this neck is, is really great. So, 
I can't play anything super fast on this guitar because it makes a bit blocky for me, but if I'm playing chords, rhythm, really get into it, this guitar is perfect for that. Um, and then obviously having these features so close to your hand is pretty standard for Les Paul style instruments. I keep saying that because it's essentially a Les Paul style instrument in a lot of ways, um, but this feel is really great. I honestly really enjoy the playability of this, and I'm gonna give the playability on this guitar a 10 out of 10. All right, so as far as tonal qualities, like I said before, um, the tone knobs really bring out a lot of the guitar. Now I will say, because this is a solid mahogany backed and then as well maple capped instrument, it's gonna follow some fundamentals that we already know about in regards to Les Pauls. First off, it's gonna be a little flubby in the low end. Nothing that an EQ or a mid boost couldn't take out. <laughs> This guitar is a rhythm guitar machine. It sounds really good, but can also get some really cool um, dirty tones. What I did have to do was, when I was adjusting for my current rig, I did have to crank the Tube Screamer drive all the way up. Um, I don't usually do that on most guitars, but these pickups kind of necessitated that kind of um, pull for my drive. So I'm gonna go ahead and play just some standard drive tones, and get you guys an idea of what this sounds like underneath some distortion. That's gonna be both pickups, then we'll go to this uh, bridge pickup. And then we've got the neck pickup. So as far as tones go, this guitar is really great for ambient stuff, but for the lead stuff, it can get kind of lost. Now obviously this guitar has its place in the realm of tools that a guitarist would use on a gig. I think this guitar is definitely gonna be more in the standard like rhythm and blues section. Um, you can take a screaming lead on this, but it's gonna need a little help. Um, the pickups are, are good. I wouldn't say they're amazing or like next level, but they definitely get the job done and definitely sound way better than the Fender pickups I had on my last instrument. So as far as tones go, I'm gonna give this guitar an eight out of 10. Very versatile, very adept, but definitely made to fit the rhythm guitar, chonky, um, big gain kind of sounds. All right, finally, let's talk about the price. Now, of course, I think that PRS guitars are always a little overpriced, but that is just how the cookie crumbles. I will say this guitar will sell on a used market for about $700. I think that's a pretty fair price with what you're getting out of this instrument, although I would like it to be a little cheaper. So if you can find it for $650, $600, I'm all about that. I don't even wanna talk about just MSRP. I would never buy a guitar MSRP, so I won't tell you right now, but it's gonna be in like the eight or 900s for this guitar. But I think it is definitely worth that $650, 700 area if you can afford it get a gig bag with it it's really great i think this guitar is a fair price for the features you get and i think that your money's not going to be wasted if you buy it used Guys, thank you so much for watching my review video of the PRS SC Zach Myers guitar in Trampa Screen. If you liked it, please consider subscribing. I make videos all the time. Now, although this guitar was a 2014 edition, you can only expect them to have even better editions nowadays. We actually have a PRS SC Zach Myers out this year, 2021. If you guys have not checked that guitar out yet, you should check it out. This guitar is great. I can't imagine that wouldn't be any better than this one. And of course, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and we'll see you next time on iGuitar.